Hello, Man in Gray here with another Man in Gray book review. Today's book is 101 Places Not to See Before You Die by Catherine Price, published in 2010 by Harper. It's 252 pages. This book is a parody of all those places you have to see before you die books. And there's a couple of things about those books that, that irritate me. Uh, for one thing, you don't have to see any place before you die. Um, some people don't like to travel. They're happy to stay home. There's nothing wrong with that. The other thing that irritates me about those books is the presumption that you can just get on a plane and fly to Patagonia or Nepal anytime you want to. Well, you can do that if you're in the 1%, but 99% of other people have to carefully budget their vacations if they can afford to go on vacations at all. Those books should just be titled, Here is 101 or 1001 interesting places. But the idea that you're supposed to go see these is stupid. Uh, that being said, this is a lighthearted book, uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, survey of some places you don't want to go. Some places you don't want to go are quite obvious, like hell, uh, or a North Korean gulag, or the Department of Motor Vehicles on a Monday morning. Uh, but others are uh, less well-known. Um, and I made a list here. Uh, I'm not going to go over all 101, but there's some of them that, that uh, I, I thought were quite uh, amusing. Um, one, place, one place that uh, is, uh, is one that I've actually been to is Mount Rushmore. Um, and Mount Rushmore, it, it, there's really nothing to do there. You go there and you park in this huge parking lot and you go up there and you see the faces of the presence on the other side of a, of a valley. You can't get close to them at all. And I went at night where they have this little ceremony where they show you a video about how Mount Rushmore was built. And then uh, they turn on these floodlights and everybody claps and you sit there for a few minutes. And then you go back to the parking lot. And in my case, I had to sit in the parking lot for nearly an hour before I could get out because there's only one road in and out of that parking lot. Uh, and then, as the book points out, Mount Rushmore is, was carved into uh, Mount Rushmore is one of the mountains in the Black Hills, which are considered sacred uh, to the Sioux. And um, so, this to this day, they consider the the, the carving of those presidents to be uh, sacrilegious. So there's that too. Um, then there's Four Corners, another place I've been to. That's a place out in the middle of the desert where Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona meet. And there's a little plaque on the ground, uh, and if you stand on it, you're standing in all four states at once. That's the only place in the United States where you can do that. And that's it. There's nothing else to do there. <laughs> there's, there's not a roller coaster or anything like that. It's just a plaque on the ground. So there's places like that. Uh, some of the other places that are mentioned in here are, are events. Uh, one notorious one is the Gloucester Cheese Rolling Competition in Gloucester, England, where every year... Hundreds of idiots chase a giant wheel of cheese down a steep hill. Uh, and every year, dozens of people are so badly injured from falling that they have to require medical uh, treatment. And the prize for risking your neck chasing this roll of cheese is to get a big block of cheese. That's it. There's no cash award or anything else. Um, then another event that's talked about in here is uh, Times Square on New Year's Eve, and everyone has seen the ball come down on TV. Uh, but what a lot of po people don't realize is when you get to Times, well, of course, it's also usually freezing cold in January in New York. It's not always, but often it's below zero. You get there, and you're not allowed to leave until after the ball drops. Uh, there's no bathrooms. There's no food providers. And no alcohol is allowed. And when the ball finally drops and you get to leave, you have to walk about eight blocks to a train station. And then you have to wait an enormous amount of time because there's hundreds of thousands of people uh, all trying to get on the train and go home. So <laughs> you might think twice about going to Times Square uh on New Year's Eve. So, as you can tell, this is a fun book. Uh, it, it's entertaining. There's a, a lot of little funny things. Um, there's some obscure places like the Beijing Museum of Tap Water, where if you go there, you can learn all about the history of water treatment in China, <laughs> places like that. Um, so, if you enjoy kind of offbeat history and you like a laugh, this book is, is a fun book to read. Um, 
but again, these are places you probably wouldn't want to go. Um, oh, I did want to mention one other real quickly. I'm thinking of. another one they mentioned is Stonehenge, the famous Neolithic uh, monument in, in uh, southern England. The reason Stonehenge makes the list is that when you get there, you find that there's a chain link fence around the monument and you have to pay an admission fee to get inside. And when you get inside, you're not allowed to get very close. You can't touch the stones. They're afraid of vandalism. And so these people keep you uh, off to a distance. And there's a highway that runs right by Stonehenge. And so if you stop your car, pull a car off the side of the road, you can see Stonehenge just as well outside the fence as you can from paying the entrance fee. So there's little insights like that in the book, too, that if you actually want to go to some of these tourist places, you'll find out that they're not really worth going to. The book is 101 Places to, Not to See Before You Die, and the author is uh, Catherine Price. This has been another Man in Great Book Review. Thanks for watching.